This is Dr. Jerry Hesch, a physical therapist from the Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And this is my client, John, who's had uh, multiple consults for testicular pain and pain in the inguinal area, especially the entrance of the inguinal canal. And he also is aware of his pelvis being asymmetrical and what's interesting is with gross movements such as backward bending or twisting his trunk to the left, he can reduce this inguinal pain. And I'm only going to focus on the structural presentation. Um, I'm gonna, he does have tightness in internal rotation of both hips, but otherwise his hip range of motion is very good on both sides in all directions. When we look at his pelvis, it's, it's a unique presentation because he has multiple patterns going on with the pelvis and usually a person will present with one or two or three uh, different patterns uh, but in this case he has several which I will, which I will show you. His, his right ilium is lower than the left and this may involve the whole pelvis moving. Um, there's only two degrees of rotation in the sacroiliac joint and only two degrees of glide, give or take a little bit. Um, so I talk about the pelvis much more so than I do the sacroiliac joint, but I do show where there is a, a, a decrease of mobility traversing through the sacroiliac joint. And on his left ilium, I can take up the slack and I can spring it and the whole pelvis moves as it should. And when I spring it, it bounces back. And on the right side, I can't even take up that slack. It's so rigid, I'm not getting any movement. So we named that anterior ilium, but we're not hung up on a sacroiliac explanation. This is pelvic side glide, and I can take up the slack and I can spring it. Now the camera, uh, I, hope, I hope you can see this, but when I try and glide his pelvis to the right, I'm using the same amount of force and now I'm significantly increasing that force and there is no left to right pelvic side glide. He's very tender with palpation of the pubic bone, but he has symmetry of the top of it and in the front he has symmetry at the upper third symmetry at the lower third, I'm sorry, middle third, middle third, and at the lowest third he is posterior on the left. If I bring my right thumb across, I'm hitting the seam, but if I could cross that seam, I would overlay the left side. Um, so if, if this is his left pubic bone and this is his right pubic bone, the lower part on the left is posterior. And that'll move his ischium posterior as well. So if you would lie on your stomach. So here on the anatomical model, if his pubic bone is rotated like this, causing the lower part to be asymmetrical, then the back of that pubic bone is the ischium. And this left ischium is posterior and it doesn't spring forward. So I'm on the flat part of the ischium on the left and I'm trying to take up the slack and there's no movement. On the right side I can take up the slack and then I can impart an additional force and there's movement all the way down to the heel. So this force is traversing through the sacroiliac into the hip and down to the lower extremity. We screamed his sacrum in multiple positions and sacrum uh, presents with symmetry of position and also symmetry of mobility in each of the four quadrants and in terms of each side for left and right rotation. Um, good mobility there. When we come to the ilium, he has anterior rotational mobility so we can take him further forward. On the left side, he moves well, so you cannot claim that he has a posterior ilium left. That's just not, not the case. There's no blocked movement. The 
left ilium, I can take up the slack and I can spring it inferiorly. And the right ilium does not move. I cannot take up the slack. I cannot spring it inferiorly. However, there is good vertical mobility on both sides. And then when I come down to the sit bones, don't know if the camera can capture this or not, but my right thumb is about an inch away from the midline of his body. And the left thumb is twice that. And when I capture the outside of the, of the left ischium and I try and spring it medially, there's no give. And the same thing on the right. There's no lateral mobility. And the same is true, I've tested this before, when we try and spring it medially on the, on the right. And the same is true when we try and spring it on the left. So the lower pelvis is swung over to the left. It's also a little bit of a rotational pattern. And um, that involves the hip joints, that involves the entire pelvis, and uh, certainly could involve those very small movements in the, uh, in the sacroiliac joints and in the uh, pubic joints, but we just can't measure that in the clinic. We can't measure those two degrees of rotation or two degrees of glide. So it's just a, an assumption that we make that that movement participates, but, but a lot of movement comes external to the SI joint as well. So uh, this is what I have named a left lower windswept pelvis. And so he has a lot going on with his pelvis in terms of asymmetries of position, but also with reduction in motion. And so we will start to treat him and uh, we'll come back and film the response. And because he can move his body he can move his spine into extension and get reduction of the testicular and inguinal pain. And he can twist his trunk to the left and get reduction in those symptoms. It begs the question of if we improve mobility in the linkage between trunk, pelvis, and hip, uh, can we reduce those symptoms? And simply an unknown. We'll only know by trying. Thank you.